Good morning. It is a joy to welcome you this morning on this second Sunday after the Epiphany. My name is Paul Millward, and it's my privilege to welcome you to St. Paul's Cathedral for this service of morning prayer. Our thanks this morning to all who are involved in putting this worship together, to Catherine and Ian Sadler for their gift of song, and Deacon Pat Henderson, who will proclaim the gospel and be our intercessor, to the Reverend Dr. Virginia Lane, who will be our lector and homilist this morning, and to our technical support team of John Spruill, Brian Elliott, and Christopher Sadler, our thanks once again for the work that you do to make all of this possible. Thank you, too, for joining us this morning for this time of worship and these continuing times of pandemic. We pray that you will be safe and well in these anxious days. Our service is one of morning prayer taken from the Book of Alternative Services. We continue with our opening hymn, The People That in Darkness Sat. Open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. The canticle selected for this morning is the canticle entitled The New Jerusalem, taken from the 60th chapter of the prophetic words of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness covers the nations, over you will the Lord arise. Over you will his glory appear. Nations will stream to your light and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will always be open. Day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will name your walls salvation. You will call your gates praise. No longer will the sun be your light by day. No longer the moon give you light by night. The Lord will be your eternal light. Your God will be your glory. The Lord is our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, 
Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? 
For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, for which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see the heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Listening carefully to today's readings, the whole theme of call and vocation vibrates through them. One would have to be almost deaf to hear both Samuel and Nathaniel's experience of their call. I suspect for many people, when they hear the words call and vocation, they hear it in the context of one's call to ordained ministry. But my friends, the call of God is a call to each and every human being. And it behooves each of us to examine what that call means in our lives. Just prior to our gospel passage today is the story of John the Baptist pointing out Jesus to two of his disciples, declaring, look, the Lamb of God. And these two begin to follow Jesus, who in turn asks, What are you looking for? What do you seek? What a profound question Jesus asks them, and I believe is still asking us today the same question. What is it we are looking for in this life? Or perhaps we could hear it differently. What is the meaning of my life, 
And how committed am I to being a Christian? There's no question that we face a significant amount of skepticism in the world, our society, and the church today. Perhaps the declining role and impact of the church in the life of our society today reflects some of Nathaniel's skepticism. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Or in today's language, the church? With no desire to reflect blame, perhaps the skepticism we hear is a reflection of how well we in the Christian church have heard the call of Jesus in our lives and its impact upon us. Nathaniel did take some convincing, some direct challenge by Jesus to reach his declaration of faith, where he stated clearly, you are the Son of God. How then as followers of Jesus, today declare our faith? Is our faith a source of deep meaning in our lives, or does it fill us with an enthusiasm where we are willing to go into the streets of the world and invite people to come and see this Jesus that perhaps can enliven our lives? Well, each of us is called to a life grounded in Christ, and the dimension of that call is a willingness to commit to our vocation as a Christian. There is much in our world today that is challenging the Christian church to be much clearer and bolder about who we are as followers of Jesus, and what our vocation really is. We are surrounded in this world by failure of leadership, entitlement, bigotry, lies, deceit, dishonesty, violence, environmental erosion, to name only a few of the destructive aspects impacting our communities today. Now is the time for us to make clear the deeper meaning that Christ brings to our lives, that the kingdom of God lives, lives in our midst. There's no question that the pandemic we are in is forcing us to do church in a different way. And we are beginning to see that the church we have known may no longer be effective in today's world. In an article entitled, The Church in a Postmodern Age, there are some interesting thoughts regarding the issue of change and transformation that may be informative. And I quote, something is happening in Western culture We feel it in our bones when we walk in a mall or turn on the television. Something is is different both out there and perhaps more alarmingly, deep within ourselves. We have a sinking feeling that we don't really understand what is going on. But we know that the changes taking place around us, around us, affect both what we believe and the way in which we believe. We are, have a growing sus- suspicion that these changes will require us to rethink and revision what it means to be the church and what it means to share our faith with others. End of quote. As unsettling as this may be to some, I believe that there is truth to it and I sense that we are being forced to look at just what we communicate or share, how, rather how we communicate and share the message of our vocation as Christians. The message itself does not change, 
God who created our world and whose love for us was so great so that God willingly gave God's Son to this world. And Jesus, in turn, invites each one of us to come and see and be his disciples. But what does that look like in our lives? And are we committed to our vocation as followers of Jesus? The Episcopal priding Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, a follower of Jesus, stated, and I'm quoting, I believe that Jesus' way of love and his way of life is the way of life for us all. I believe that unselfish, sacrificial love, love that seeks the good and the welfare and well-being of others as well as the self, that this is the way that can lead us and guide us to do what is just, to do what is right, and to do what is merciful. It is the way that can lead us beyond the chaos to community. End of quote. So, have you seen, responded, and experienced this Jesus and what he has to offer for your life? Have you accepted his call and committed to a vocation as his follower? Some thoughts for this week. Amen. Our service continues as we affirm our faith in the words of the Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray to God, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons in the Diocese of Huron and in the Diocese of Amazonia, followers of Jesus, the one who unlocks the mysteries of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we know we are called to be the body of Christ. Make us worthy of that calling, fervent in all our prayer and worship, loving, faithful, and honest in our lives, so that the whole church displays what God is like. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the grace and wisdom to care for this world we have been given as our home, we pray for the leaders of the nations, especially our neighbors to the south in the United States, for perception in difficult decisions and commitment to justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our homes of this parish whose hopes and struggles and sorrows and fears are already known to you. May each household be blessed as we pray and may your love fill each life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, 
especially those who are dealing with the effects of the coronavirus. May your light scatter their darkness and bring them hope and healing and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died to this life and are born into your heaven. Comfort those who miss their physical presence and bring us all to share in the fullness of your life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you for all that points us towards the beauty of your love and draws us closer to you. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We gather these prayers together as we pray the collect for this second Sunday after the Epiphany. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn this day, brightest and best of the stars of the morning. And now we draw this time of worship to its conclusion. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.